Hi, this is Dr. Karthik from Medical Snippet. In this video, let's discuss on central venous pressure tracings. Central venous pressure represents the filling pressure of the right side of the heart. Normal central venous pressure ranges from 8 to 12 millimeter of mercury. This value is altered by volume status and venous compliance. Central venous pressure is usually measured at the superior vena cava and the right atrial junction. It is measured by inserting a catheter via the internal jugular vein so that the tip of the catheter lies at the SVC and right atrial junction. A normal central venous pressure waveforms has three peaks, namely A, C, and V waves, and it has two descents, namely X and Y descent. Let's now see each component in detail. Each component corresponds to various phases of the cardiac cycle. Now let's draw the various phases of the cardiac cycle. The first peak of the central venous pressure tracing is the A wave. It corresponds to the right atrial contraction. That is, when the right atrium contracts, the pressure inside increases, which is seen as A wave in the CVP pressure tracing. Since A wave occurs due to atrial contraction, it corresponds to the B wave in the ECG. Shortly after the A wave is the second peak, called C wave. This occurs during the start of the right ventricular contraction, that is, during the isovolumetric contraction phase. In this phase, the right ventricle starts to contract when both the tricuspid and the pulmonary valves are in closed position. During this phase, as the ventricular pressure increases, the closed tricuspid valve bulges into the right atrium. This causes increase in the right atrial pressure. This is seen as C wave in the CVP pressure tracing. As C wave occurs during the right ventricular contraction phase, it corresponds to the end of the R wave in the ECG. Following the C wave is the first descent in the CVP tracing. This is called the X descent. As the ventricle continues to contract, it descends and pulls the tricuspid valve towards the right ventricular apex. This causes the pressure in the right atrium to fall. At the same time, the right atrial pressure further decreases due to the right atrial relaxation. These changes cause the X descent in the CVP pressure tracing. X descent happens before the T wave on the ECG. As the right atrium begins to fill at the end of the systole of the ventricle, the right atrial pressure increases. This causes the V wave in the CVP pressure tracing. It corresponds to the T wave in the ECG. As the ventricle starts to relax, the tricuspid valve opens and the right atrial blood enters the right ventricle. So the pressure in the right atrium decreases and causes the wide descent. Let's see the relationship between the heart sounds and the CVP waveform. A wave is seen before the first heart sound. The C wave is seen just after the first heart sound and the V wave is seen just after the second heart sound. This completes the normal central venous pressure tracings. Now with this basic knowledge, 
Let's proceed to abnormal CVP pressure tracings. First, we will see what happens in atrial fibrillation. As there are no effective atrial contractions in atrial fibrillation, there is loss of A waves in the CVP. This is the same reason for the absent P waves in the ECG in atrial fibrillation. But in reality, it is very difficult to appreciate the loss of A waves. As atrium quivers and contracts in a disorganized manner, it may not produce any appreciable pressure waves. Canon A waves. It happens when the atrium and ventricle contracts at the same time. This results infusion of A wave and C wave. Right ventricular contraction closes the tricuspid valve. So when the right atrium also contracts, at the same time it contracts against the closed tricuspid valve. This rapidly increases the right atrial pressure to cause canon A waves. Some of the causes for simultaneous atrial and ventricular contractions are junctional rhythm, ventricular pacing, ventricular tachycardia, and complete heart block. Prominent AV. In tricuspid stenosis, there is increased resistance to the blood flow from right atrium to ventricle. So during atrial contraction, the pressure increases more and causes prominent AV. And the passive atrial MT is also slow and delayed due to the tricuspid stenosis. So the white descent is of lower amplitude and longer duration. In other words, the white descent is attenuated. Other causes of prominent A wave or any pathology that decreases the right ventricular compliance, like pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary hypertension. Prominent V wave. In tricuspid regurgitation, there is backflow of blood to right atrium when the right ventricle starts to contract. This makes C wave more prominent. There is loss of X descent and V wave fuses with the C wave. This results in a huge regurgitant C V wave. In this huge regurgitant C V wave, V wave is more prominent and it reflects the right ventricular systolic pressure. Prominent X and Y descent. It is seen in constrictive pericarditis. The central venous pressure is increased in this condition. The X descent is prominent due to exaggerated longitudinal tricuspid annular motion, and there is also prominent Y descent. It is due to the rapid early ventricular filling. Absent white descent. It occurs in cardiac tamponade. It is due to the restriction of right ventricular filling due to tamponade. And this completes the abnormal CVP pressure tracings. I would also recommend to watch the pulmonary artery pressure tracing video. The link of the video is given in the description. Please do watch. Hope this video was useful and thank you. See you soon in the next video.